Hi, David. Hi, Bob. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Let me introduce us. I'm Robert Wright. This is The Wright Show, available on streaming video and audio podcast. You're David Chalmers, very well-known philosopher uh, at New York University. Uh, you may still have an affiliation in Australia, do you? Are you? Yep, I'm 20% at the Australian National University. 20% of you is there even as we speak? Uh, it tends to be the uh, the middle of the year, around June I see. And I see. Okay. So, uh, and you're also the author of a number of books, The Conscious Mind, The Character of Consciousness is the second one, and Constructing the World is the most recent, all published by Oxford University Press. And, uh, you know, you're very prominently associated with what we're going to talk about today, the study of consciousness, the mind-body problem. Uh, I would say if you uh, did a poll of philosophers asking them to name colleagues who work on this, uh, your name would appear uh, on probably in the top, in, in the number one spot on a lot of lists. Um, and so thanks for taking the time. Now, we are going to tackle the uh, question of what consciousness is for, and I think we are... We're willing to promise at the outset that we will have the problem completely solved by the end of the conversation, right? No worries. We, we have an hour? That's sure. Sure. In fact, we'll have, we'll have time left over. We can talk about uh, the World Series or something. Yep. Um, uh, so, <clears throat> and let me say, I have kind of a wacky theory about what consciousness might be for, which would have radical implications for how we think about the meaning of life. You have been working lately on a kind of a as I understand it, kind of a, 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 a theory that's been around for a while that's considered wacky in some corners is it grows out of quantum physics and it would have very radical implications for how we perceive our relationship to reality, how we think about that. And so, but first we should set the problem up. And let me just, first of all, get a little clear on definitions. I think you and I both, when we speak of consciousness, are just talking about subjective experience in a broad sense. I mean, some people define consciousness in a way that's inherently specific to the human species. It's like self-awareness or something. But this is just the fact that, like, when my dog wags, it, wags its tail, I think it's feeling something. Or when it seems that it's been injured, I think it's feeling pain. So it's something that any animal could, in principle, feel. We don't know for sure, but it's just kind of the fact that it's like to be uh, something to be alive, as uh, Thomas Nagel put it, right? Yeah, basically, you know, it's like something to be me. It's like something to feel pain, to feel pain or to see the color red. These all have an associated quality of subjective experience and needn't be anything terribly complicated. Any system which is actually feeling pain will be conscious in this sense. You're conscious if it feels like something from the inside. I mean, Tom Nagel talked about what is it like to be a bat? Well, we don't know, but as long as it's like something to be a bat, then the bat is conscious. Philosophers sometimes talk about phenomenal consciousness, just to kind of, it's a technical term that just means it kind of appears like something to you, but to kind of capture the distinctive sense of consciousness and to distinguish it from self-consciousness, consciousness of yourself, which is probably something a lot more complicated, limited to humans and perhaps a few other species, and other kinds of, you know, behaviorally defined consciousness, what matters for the kind of consciousness we're talking about today is just the experience. Mm -hmm. My own wacky theory may get us into the subject of self-consciousness, but we'll come to that later. Now, if people were to ask, well, why is, it, uh, why is it a mystery what consciousness is for? I guess we should say that on some views of consciousness, it's not so mysterious. So, like, if you look at the way Descartes looked at consciousness, that's called uh, interactive dualism, meaning, you know, dualistic in the sense that this consciousness is in some sense separate from the body, and... The interactive part means that, you know, the on the one hand, the body influences consciousness, but on the other hand, according to Descartes, consciousness influences the body. That's the, the, the interaction. It goes both ways. And if that's the case, it's no, it's no great mystery. Then consciousness is integral to the functioning of the body. It's there to help the body work, right? Yeah. I mean, in a way, to even pose the question, what is consciousness for, it helps to talk a little about a prior question, which is how can we explain why conscious, you know, why does consciousness exist at all? And can we, for example, explain it in terms of processes in the brain? You might think, okay, well, we can explain everything about the mind straightforwardly in terms of the brain, so why not consciousness too? The trouble is, while that works pretty well for aspects of the mind which are tied very deeply to behavior, to doing stuff, to responding, to use of language, and so on, it's very unclear how that works for explaining subjective experience 
itself. It seems that you could explain all the stuff that I do, how I, for example, walk around, how I respond to your questions, and it still seems a bit of a mystery why all of that should be accompanied by a first-person perspective, something that feels like something from the inside right. when I'm uh, experiencing this conversation. So various people, including me, have argued there's in fact a principled limitation there, and you're not going to explain everything about consciousness in terms of processes in the brain. And, you know, I've at least entertained the idea that it's something non-physical, but that raises the question of what it is that consciousness does, or the more strongly, how could something non-physical play a role in the physical world? Descartes thought consciousness was non-physical, but he actually gave it a role in the physical world, saying there's a non-physical consciousness affects your brain via the, uh, the pineal gland, and that goes on to affect behavior, and in fact, consciousness might be directly, causally responsible for things like our use of language and our sophisticated reasoning. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, when, I, when I'm trying to explain to people why I think it's not clear what consciousness is for, I say a couple of things that I think are consistent with what you just said. One is, well, look, first of all, we it increasingly looks like we could, in principle, build a machine that would do stuff as complicated as what humans do, and everything about the machine would be explicable in physical terms. We would understand, like, okay, we programmed this physical information, and information does assume physical incarnation in computer code, and in fact, it has all its effects physically, and you can trace them as they flow through the robot, and so on. So, first of all, it just seems like in principle, you know, and, and of course, for all we know, it does feel like something to be the robot, but the point is we can explain all the robot's behavior without making that claim. Uh, or, or to put it in... Uh, in well, well, and let me ask you th this. I think that... Uh, well, let me give you another example. The, the If you ask the average kind of behavioral scientist, like maybe a neurologist or... Or, or something to explain what's going on when I accidentally put my hand near a flame and then withdraw it because of the pain, they will give me an answer in physical terms, right? I mean, they'll say, uh, well, you've got these nerve endings and they send this physical information up and it has this physical effect and that leads to this reflex action and so on. So, you know, although behavioral scientists, I think, often don't think about the problem of consciousness, I think if you look at the way they talk and set about explaining our behavior, implied in, in the way they they talk is the idea that it's not clear that consciousness has a role, that subjective experience has a role in actually doing anything, right? Isn't that kind of implied assumption in the behavioral sciences? It certainly looks that as if most of the explanations which are given at least at a low level in the cognitive and behavioral sciences don't seem to mention consciousness. And it's mm -hmm. sure it's starting to look as if most of what we can explain can be explained without any kind of explicit mention of consciousness. Now, to be fair, so far we can't explain so much in the behavioral sciences. We certainly can't explain uh, everything. So you might say, well, maybe there'll still be a role for it. But, but it looks like, in principle, we're moving towards certainly a vision where everything we do can be explained in terms of, say, neural firings or computational processes in the brain. And then there's a real question, well, where does consciousness get in? Now, if you're inclined to think, consciousness is just some neural process or other, or some computational process or other, then you might not be as worried about this. You say, oh, it's just another emergent high-level phenomenon like life, and it's the same that biologists don't mention life when they, uh, mm -hmm. when they explain stuff in terms of DNA, but it's not as if life doesn't play any role. It's just, you know, it's a kind of a phenomenon of complexity. But for many of us, consciousness is, poses you know, has a kind of special status that goes beyond the status of life. And it's very hard to see how it's reducible to a brain process or a computational process. And if you're not willing to be that kind of reductionist about consciousness, then it's harder just to take the line of, ah, it's just a high-level neural or computational process. And then it really does raise the question, what is consciousness actually do? 